This news update is brought to you by. Grab somebody and tell them. This is the Barbados Today Afternoon Update for Thursday, November 19th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Operators of public service vehicles are calling for a fair deal from the island's insurance companies. And Chairman of the Alliance for Public Transport, Roy Raphael, is anxious to meet with Massey United Insurance, which has opted not to renew the insurance of several PSVs. Raphael is fearful that other companies may follow suit, and he's asking insurers not to penalize the group because of the actions of offending operators and owners. He is hoping to meet with Massey United to discuss the issue and hinted that he is prepared to go as far as the supervisor of insurance to intervene if necessary. Meanwhile, Director of Business Development and Marketing at Massey United, Mickey Armstrong, says the company is open to meeting with PSV operators and owners. He explained that the decision to insure only PSVs which are owner-driven came because of the high number of claims from PSVs in recent years. The head of the Accident and Emergency Department at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital says the increase in gun crime is putting a strain on the department's resources. Dr. Shaney Williams tells Barbados today while she cannot state the economic cost of treating those cases, it is something that management is considering. It does put a strain on our resources because it uses all of our manpower, all of our supplies, and all of our time. And it then affects other patients who are waiting to be seen with other emergencies. Things like blood, of course, the blood bank must be fairly drained. You know? Yes, but those, yes, that the blood bank also is heavily de uh, heavily yeah. utilized when those cases have to go to surgery. Dr. Williams was speaking shortly after receiving a donation of equipment valued at $27,000 from the Barbados Muslim Association. Meantime, amid concerns of uh, delinquency among some of the country's youth, there is news that the minister in charge, Stephen Lashley, will soon roll out a range of plans targeting young people. Permanent Secretary Rose Blackman made the announcement during last night's graduation of uh, students of the Motion Picture Arts course at the Errol Barrow Center for Creative Imagination. Among those plans, she says, will be the strengthening of the Barbados Youth Service. We are pressing on with assistance to all at-risk youth to the Barbados Youth Service, the Endless Possibilities Program, and the Youth Mainstreaming Program. All these programs give our young people a second chance. A critical part of these programs is the intense psychosocial counseling that takes place with the young people, and in some cases with their parents. As a result, behavior modification takes place and lives are changed. It is for that reason that the ministry is increasing its efforts to find a permanent home for the Barbados Youth Service so that our intake of young people can be expanded beyond the 80 trainees per annum to the 300 it was before the dislocation engendered by the relocation of Her Majesty's prison in 2005 allowed. President and Chief Executive Officer of Emera Caribbean Inc., Sarah McDonald, says plans for a 10-megawatt wind farm in Lambert St. Lucie is still on the cards. The plans back in December 2010 for, was for the Barbados Light and Power Company to construct a multi-million dollar facility consisting of 11 wind turbines, access tracks, and associated control buildings. However, they had to be shelved after the company was unable to get the go-ahead from landowners. McDonald says her company is still keen on carrying out that plan, but is unsure when it would happen. The wind here is uh, uh, really good, but access to land is always an issue. And so we're continuing to work with our stakeholders, and we believe that the Lambert's project, which is zoned, for, uh, for a wind, wind uh, renewable energy is still going to happen.
The development of a mobile financial service could impact positively on the Caribbean's gross domestic product. So says Dr. Maurice McNaughton, Director for the Center of Excellence for IT, Enable inno Innovation at the Mona School of Business. However, he tells regional governments it would require regulatory and policy frameworks, consumer readiness and research. Using the example of a mobile payment system in Kenya, McNaughton says the move would require public and private sector partnership. We think that, as we've seen with M-Pesa, and in fact the evidence is clear in other places, that mobile financial services can impact development, influence GDP. I mean, we won't get into what the, rate, the rates are, um, but through three ways, by financial inclusion, um, getting more people engaged in the formal banking system, more efficient commerce, which I personally think is the biggest driver um, of the economic impact. And as we saw in the case of M-Pesa, um, stimulating an innovation ecosystem and job growth around that whole uh, M-Pesa mobile payments. The University of the West Indies Border campus official was addressing a breakfast seminar at the 3Ws Oval Keyville campus this morning. In sports, Barbados ended at their Caribbean Football Union on the 17 girls football campaign in Puerto Rico last night with a 4-1 loss to the Dominican Republic. It was Barbados's third defeat on the trot where they also conceded 24 goals while scoring two. They finished at the bottom of Group B. There's regional and international news after this short break. news from the region, the state of emergency declared by President François Hollande following terrorist attacks in Paris has been extended to French Caribbean islands. According to the French Minister of Overseas Territories, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Saint-Martin, saint Baths, and Reunion Island will all be under strict security rules for the next three months. The minister said the decision was to include the Caribbean was necessary given the deadly attacks that left 129 people dead and another 350 injured. Under the state of emergency, law enforcement officials have the power to, among other things, randomly stop persons and install zones for protection and security, detain suspicious persons and their possessions, to ban meetings or demonstration, to other searches in houses, rather be it day or night, and to other the submission of weapons and ammunition. And on the international scene, the Paris prosecutor today confirmed that the suspected mastermind behind the Paris attacks was killed during yesterday's police raid. His body was found riddled with bullets and shrapnel in a shattered apartment in the northern suburb of Saint Denis. The Belgium national, who is 28 years old, was identified from his fingerprints. The prosecutor's office said that they were still unclear whether the suspected terrorist blew himself up or not. Now, investigators are still looking for another suspect, Salah Abdesalam, who is believed to have traveled to Belgium after the attacks on a Friday night. And that's our afternoon update, but there's more on our website at www.wabidistree.pv. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and of course, like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. I'm Frenella Weatherburn. Good afternoon.